If you like this video and you want to see more like it before they go up on YouTube, head over to Library. It's an awesome decentralized alternative to YouTube and I absolutely love it. Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite robot newsboy, Gardner. So if you don't know, I actually do a monthly request thread, uh, like people suggesting video ideas over on my Patreon. So if you have an idea for a video you'd like to see me do, you can submit it over on Patreon. But yesterday I actually got a response that like I, I felt I really should do a video on. This is from a user named User on Patreon, and he says, could you do a big walkthrough of Lutris explaining generally how it works and showing some examples? I use Steam exclusively because it mostly works with little configuration, but the proprietary aspect isn't lost on me. So here's the deal. Lutris actually is kind of weird. Uh, I, it took me quite a bit of time to actually figure out how the Lutris devs wanted me to use it, and uh, I'll share that with you now. Um, Lutris is awesome, first of all. Let's talk about how awesome Lutris is. Let's open it up. So if you wanna install a game from one of your various uh, libraries, then the way you do it is relatively simple. So you would go to uh, import games, and you would add your GOG or your Humble account, which I've done, I don't know why it's not here, or your Steam account, and um, you would actually import them into here. Now, if you wanted to get uh, your, your Steam games into your Lutris library, you have to install the games in Steam before they show up in your Lutris library. Um, but for these two, uh, GOG and Humble, you can just select all and hit import. From there, you just double click on a game that you wanna install, select where you wanna install it from and go through the process. That's great. I mean, you can install any of these games uh, from any place that you have them. If the game doesn't have a native Linux client, um, there are multiple ways that you can get it running through something called a runner, which is sort of like a wrapper. It's, it's one of the various means of launching a non-native binary on Linux. Um, it could be an emulator, it could be Wine, it could be uh, Proton, uh, it could be through your browser. And you can actually see which runners are available natively uh, by clicking the, the, uh, the menu there and selecting Manage Runners. Now, unfortunately, installing a runner won't actually allow you to use Lutris as a front end automatically. Uh, you're gonna have to do a little bit of legwork to get your games to show up inside of Lutris. For example, if I wanted to uh, have my uh, GameCube emulation, or my Wii emulation, I could install the Dolphin emulator runner. Um, but there really isn't a place to specify where I want my games to show up uh, or, or where I want to scan for games. Um, that's something that you're gonna have to do manually. You click on plus, add game, and then choose Dolphin and select what you want to actually, uh, so you would say, uh, let's say Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, and then you would go over here, select the ISO, and we could select Mario Sunshine. And we'll select GameCube. Uh, there's other things that you can do. You can have it launch without a uh, UI. So a lot of these are more advanced options. Most of the time you don't need to do that. Uh, and then if you click on Nintendo GameCube, you got Super Mario Sunshine right there. And there you go. We have Super Mario Sunshine running. Um, through Lutris, through uh, through Dolphin, through Lutris. And that's pretty cool. I mean, you can actually play Super Mario Sunshine through Lutris. You can do the same thing with a bunch of different ROMs. Um, so if I wanted to uh, go over here, uh, manage runners, I could find, let's say, a PlayStation, a P, uh, the PPSSPP emulator. Go ahead and install that. And I mean, you know, there's a ton of emulators in here. You can get uh, RPCS, uh, RPCS3, which is a PlayStation 3 emulator, Scum VM, which is for LucasArts games, uh, SNES 9X. Uh, there's a ton here. Uh, you can even get uh, the experimental Yuzu Nintendo Switch emulator, which is sweet. But a lot of these are gonna have to be manually configured. You're gonna have to import your games. So far, so good, right? But let's say that you have a, a game on CD that you wanna play that you haven't played in years. Let's say something like Black and White 2, a game that you've had on CD for years uh, that you wanna play through Wine. How would you go about doing that? Um, it's actually relatively simple. Now, you'll note that in, in my uh, runners here, I actually don't have Black and White 2 anywhere. That would be located uh, Black 
That would be located somewhere in here. Black and white too. Uh, it's not on my list. Um, so what you would actually end up doing is heading over to Lutris.net. So let's go over here to Lutris.net and let's type in black and white too. And we'll select black and white two from the list. There's two different versions. There's the DVD version and there's the DVD plus patch plus fan patch version. Um, the DVD has to be mounted for the game to uh, be installed or work. Now, I have found that uh, this is actually the multi CD version. This is four CDs. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, I have had a lot of issues with wine um, and mounting multiple CDs for like the, the disc swapping process. So what I actually did was I copied all the discs into a single file or a single directory. Um, and th the nice thing about the way these used to work is that uh, they would have like cab files or some other kind of compressed uh, binaries that uh, they, they were all named differently. So that, and that's how, if it was a DVD release versus a CD release, um, they could just have all the files on the single DVD versus having them in the CD. So I'm gonna click install here and I'm gonna point Lutris um, to the directory on my server where I ripped the files off of this disk into a single directory. So we're just gonna ha go ahead, uh, and I don't know if you saw that, but there's actually a MIME type. Lutris is a MIME type. If you click install, it'll pop up with the Lutris install script ready to go for you. So you can actually uh, hit install, and it will take a moment and download um, a bunch of the patches that are for this game. And this will handle all of the patches. I believe that there are four total patches. I might be wrong. This is two, three, there's three. So Lutris is looking for the black and white two installation media. Now, as I said, I ripped the files into a single directory and I stored that on my server under games, black and white two. And now it found the correct directory. So it's gonna go ahead and create a wine prefix. It's going to install all the dependencies that Black and White 2 needs to actually be installed and played. And uh, once that's done, we'll come back and we'll have a fully playable version of Black and White. So we'll just fast forward through all this. I don't know if it's gonna work now. <laughs> Let's try launching the game. So you can see Black and White 2 is in the list. Oh, it says please insert the correct DVD ROM. Click OK. Well, I don't have a DVD drive in this thing, so I'm gonna get a uh, no CD crack. <laughs> and while I am comfortable with getting a patch, uh, a no CD crack for this because I own it, I'm not gonna tell you how to do that. <laughs> So in order to install a crack, you're gonna to wanna to go uh, right click on the game, go to browse files, go to the install directory, which is actually gonna be under here, under lion head, black and white too. And what I like to do when I uh, install no CD cracks is actually uh, back up the, the pre-cracked version and then extract the, uh, the actual cracked version. Now we should be able to launch the game. And it looks like it's working. It looks like it might be running in like 800 by 600 or 1200 or 1024 by 768. So you can see black and white two is working. Oh, it's, oh, it's Pentium Extreme, okay. Let's add a player name. Oh, that doesn't look right. Options, video, let's go down to 1920. Set everything to high and Hit exit, save changes. There we go. So let's go to new game. Let's just make sure that everything works. It looks like some of the text is garbled. That didn't happen on my Man Manjaro machine, but. Oh, wow, look at that. Look at that, black and white too. And listen to my fans start going. I will pick the monkey.
he's just sitting there staring at me. That's uh, a little unsettling. I don't think that's how it's supposed to be. He's not supposed to be sitting there staring at me like that. That's making me a little uncomfortable, guys. It's making me a little, a little uncomfortable. Lord? <laughs> oh, that was that was truly weird. <laughs> Well, there you go. Uh, I hope that this was helpful for you. There's a lot more that you could go into with uh, Lutris. If you have a question that you want me to answer in, in like one of my next videos, let me know. I I'd love to help everybody I can out with Lutris. I mean, I like Lutris. I think it's a really cool project. That's gonna do it for this video. I wanna say thank you to the 103 amazing people over on Patreon who have made this channel what it is today. Without them, I wouldn't be able to do this. If you believe in the work that I do, you can help support the show on Patreon uh, with a monthly contribution. There's now actually yearly or annual subscriptions as well over there. Um, and you can actually become a channel member down below as well. So whatever way works best for you, uh, I appreciate your guys' support. Thank you. But that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you can pick up a t-shirt uh, if you're so inclined. You can hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. You can share this video with your friends. Uh, but no matter what you do, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.